me and to keep me healthy. And so sometimes when God begins to move you into a situation, God wants to keep you healthy. He wants to show you things. He wants you to be operating and move with compassion. And Jesus said, go and see what you have. Go and do something with what you have. Go and take the five loaves and fishes. And he says, then he says, I want you to hand them out to everybody. Then I also want you to know, it says, and they were all filled. They were all filled. Do you know what that tells me? God is a more than enough kind of God. He doesn't want to just give you just enough to get by. He could have given them just a little bit of a cracker to say, okay, everybody, this will kind of keep you okay for the journey home. This will be your little energy drink for just your, your way home. We're going to give you a little piece of fish and a little piece of loaf, and that will kind of get... No, he says, that he feed them enough to fill them up. And you've got to understand that when you look at lack in your life, when you look at situations that we just saw in Guatemala, God wants to take that lack and he wants to fill it up. You know, if you say, well, Pastor, how do I do that? Well, maybe your loaf and fish is, I have 23 extra dollars a month and I could sow it to bless one of the kids. And you say, all right, I don't have that because it's actually $40. Well, how many know when you begin to take what you have and put it out there, God will bring the increase. God will meet your need right where it is. And you, and you know the other neat thing? is he'll make sure that you and your household have enough. God's not looking to teach. God is not a taker kind of God. God does not ask you to do things so that he can kind of rip you off. He doesn't want you skinny and not getting by. He wants you chubby. He wants you happy. You know what I mean? He wants you filled. He, he, he's, he's looking for, for you to step out and do what God's called you to do. And so he said, you give them something to eat. Look at what you have. Sit down in groups. And then they sat down. And when they had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up in heaven and he blessed it. And he broke the loaves and he gave the, to the disciples. I want you to notice something too. You always need to step out and believe for blessing. Don't just sort of, you know, whatever you're doing. Believe God. Hook your faith up to what you want. Hook your faith up to whatever your need is. And you do that by blessing somebody else. And in that, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave. You need to do the same thing. You bless it, you break it, and you give. Okay? Take what you have and give. These guys would make these little trips. Wes found a corner store around the back, and I was kind of worried because they like blondes there, right? And so I would sometimes <laughs> secretly follow them to make sure they're okay. But you know what? These guys would find these cute little chocolate bars. I didn't even have any of that. Maybe that was the problem. I was okay and others weren't. But, but they, they, they would take these little portions, and then, then, then all these kids, remember all the kids come from the basketball, they, they, they knew enough English to say hello, and, and, and you guys started to bless them and give them a little bit. And they weren't there because they were greedy. They wanted to just be, they wanted their picture taken. And, and it blessed me to see you break it and give. It blessed me to see you love them. And so we need to do that. And so it said he blessed and he broke and he gave. You need to be a giver. You need to begin to say, God, you can do something with what I have. Don't look at your need. Don't look in your basket. Don't look in your wallet and say, I can't do anything because the need is too great. Yes, maybe you can't come up with $1,000 for an airfare ticket. But maybe you say, but pastor, I could come up with $12 and I could sow that. And that could be my seed to become the ticket to what I need. You know, find what you have and use it. Jesus says, bless it, break it, and then give it. And then you'll also notice here, who also got the double portion? It's the little boy. Because he gave his lunch first to the disciples. And then Jesus took the lunch that he gave to the disciples, and they broke it again, and they distributed it again. It all became seed. When you sow a kernel of corn, you know, for everybody that this is, well, you can never believe God for increase, because actually increase is not godly. Well, you tell that to a farmer. When you sow one kernel of corn, do you know it brings 500 other kernels? That's a pretty big increase. Who designed that? God did. God designed our lives to live in increase to be a blessing to other people. If we were all broken we went there, we wouldn't be able to help them. We wouldn't be able to, to, to shine the light of the gospel or to buy somebody, you know, whatever it is, a drink or a meal or some shoes or something. You wouldn't be able to do that. But we see that God has increased because he says when that little boy takes his lunch and he gives his lunch to the disciples and then the disciples take that and they give it to everybody else, all of those people were in line to receive all that God had for them. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave and they were all filled, and they took up the twelve baskets full of fragments and of fish. They actually had leftovers. They had leftovers. Think about your life. You know, sometimes we just sort of, we're just sort of so okay with complete lack. You know, it's weird because as we said in Guatemala, you're either filthy rich or dead broke. 
There's 25 families, I think, that own the whole country. They own all the real estate and stuff. You know, and where we were, you know, there was... Stephen Carlo have got a nice little ministry location there. And across the road, there's a gentleman that we don't know what he does, but he seems to be prosperous and wealthy. But 50 feet from there, there's huge lack. Somebody with a tin shack that, you know, maybe they don't even have running water. I don't know. But you see, the bottom line, though, is there's always a need. There's always something to do. And we're not going to, I guess we're into the Christmas season now, so we can think about that. But sometimes this is the most depressing time for people because we see the need is so big. Maybe it's because they feel lonely. You know, if people are feeling lonely, somebody go make them happy. Use that as your bread. You use that as your opportunity, right? Take those opportunities to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go make somebody happy. I'm going to step out. And maybe that's the fragments that you're using. Maybe there's something that you do well in your life that you say, I can bless people. I can break up what I have, and I can be a blessing to somebody else. And in turn, they will bless somebody else. See, the world tries it by paying it forward, which sounds cool. Right? It's a biblical principle. You reap what you sow. If you're not getting the kind of harvest that you want, you need to look at what you're sowing. You need to look at what you're putting in the ground, because you only get back what you put in the ground. You only get back what you, what you, what you put in the ground, you're going to get back up. You, you take that corn seed, that corn seed can't argue with the ground and go, I think I just want to be a pear. No, it's a corn seed. So whatever you need, if you think of a need in your life, you say, okay, I'm going to bless somebody. Well, the only way to truly bless somebody is to take your need and sow that in the ground and turn it around and become a blessing to somebody. Remember, the first thing that Jesus did here was he was moved with compassion. Do you know that it's always easier to do nothing? Matthew 19, verse 26 says, With God, all things are possible. He said, but pastor, it seems impossible. No, the word says, with God, all things are possible. Anthony was building this house. He bought the lot, and, and maybe you guys that were there remember, but he was um, believing God for some money. And he said the day that he needed to close the deal on the lot, I think it was, what, 16 bucks or something? It was extra. He had exactly the right amount of money. It was I don't know, $4,700.83 or something. And he had like a little wee extra. But the bottom line was the day of the closing, God provided exactly what he needed. God's never late. It's easier to do nothing. Sure it is. It's easier to just sit in a church service and say, well, I'll let somebody else do it. That's true. But you're not going to get that satisfaction in your life. And you're also not going to fulfill the will of God for your life because God said, you go. You do something. What is it that you have? You see, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach and make disciples. Go. The word go means to move forward. We've all got that choice. It's easy, and if you say, well, pastor, I've kind of been sitting back and <coughs> haven't been doing anything, that's okay. <coughs> you can talk to God with your heart. You can share with him and, and take that time. Maybe it is a, a time of repentance. Maybe it is a time of reflection. We had a lot of that while we were away. It was pretty cool. I mean, there was more tears than the Titanic ever saw, okay? But it was cleansing for everybody, and I'm not mocking at all. But there's something about you. Are you okay? <laughs> We'd laugh because the girls, if someone would ask if they were okay, they would just cry more. But, but it's, it's cleansing, though, because it cleanses your heart. It shows your heart. Doesn't it really show your heart? It really does. And so don't back away from those needs that you have. Don't feel bad when you've got a need that you go, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry if, I, if I've been, you know, 15 different directions and not following the direction that you have. Just take that opportunity. I challenge you today, because I'm going to close in a minute. I challenge you today to just get that quiet time with God and talk to him and say, Lord, I, forgive me if in my life I haven't taken the bread and I haven't distributed the way I could. Forgive me, Lord, if I've not seized those opportunities that you put in front of me. Forgive me, Lord, if I haven't been praying for people the way I should or, or stepping out. And you know what? I think every one of us could join that, that prayer. I think every one of us could, because there's always room for improvement. It's easier to do zero, but you won't be happy. It's easier to do nothing, but you won't be happy. Do you know how good you feel when you work hard in your house and you get it all tidied up and get ready and just, you know, just to enjoy your home? You work hard. It feels good to work hard. And the reward after is better than if you do zero. Okay? And so in your life as a Christian, maybe God's touching your heart today. Maybe somebody in their little testimony shared something and you kind of go, hmm, I never thought of it that way. Step out every day and say, I'm going to get involved. Maybe you yourself would like to go in the mission field. And you heard Wes share what he wants to do. Maybe 
pray about that and consider seeing somebody else be successful <coughs> in their desires <coughs> and you'll be successful in your desires. It really works that way. Okay? Now, two things you've got to look at. Uh, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you look at the, 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 the situation, you'd say, there's no hope. If you look at the situation, I've got to tell you guys, I wouldn't have believed when, when I could see through the bars in the bar, okay, they got big bars on all the windows, and the prostitutes are out looking out the windows, and there was one girl there, the one I'd mentioned, I think I said looked like Ange, and um, I thought, because I kind of thought she was mocking you guys, and I prayed for her, and I thought, oh, we'll never reach her, and sure enough, she was one of the ones at the breakfast two days later, writing out her little prayer request. Why I say that is this, I was looking at the scene, I was like, there's no way they're listening. There's no way they're going to go. There's no way. I get that that's human nature. And we even learned when we were away. You can doubt what your head is screaming. You can, your head will continually scream and go, this Christianity stuff or this church stuff or, or this miracle stuff, it's all hoo hokey and kooky and whatever. Sometimes you've got to shut your head off and say, wait a minute, head, just be quiet and listen to your heart and follow what your heart is telling you. And we did a lot of that. But that works the same in North America as it does somewhere else. Okay? You're going to have to receive Jesus. Very simple. The Bible says faith of a little child. The bottom line is Jesus came to give us life. The bottom line is Jesus shed his blood because he said, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. That's the simplicity of the gospel. Religion says, well, if you throw enough uh, uh, money in the plate, and if you have enough, you know, a little gold plates on the pew in front of you, that makes you a Christian. If you, even if you help the poor, I mean, if you do all of these things. But the beautiful part of Jesus is this. He didn't require any of those things. Those are all things that you can do. Okay? But Jesus said, while we were yet sinners. Here's the bottom line. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. And done wrong. You say, Pastor, but I'm so perfect. Well, pride then is your sin, right? There's always areas to say, hmm, I've done wrong. And Jesus said, I'll, I'll die for you. <coughs> I'll give my life for you. <coughs> and salvation is simply saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean and make me new. Give me a fresh start. Take what you have. Take those loaves and fishes. Break them and go and share it with somebody else. That's what being a Christian is. It's not about attending church. I have some, some, some friends here, even in the congregation today, that, you know, say, well, you know, and they knew her there. It was cute. Well, we weren't here. We weren't there. I don't keep track of you. That's not my job. That's not my job. God wants to bring a blessing to you. And the more we pour ourselves in the blessing, you can pray for us while you're at home or while you're away. Enjoy your time away. That's okay. Works says if I do enough things. If I sit in that chair enough, if I make it to every prayer meeting, if I do all of these things, works says I'm now somehow really making God happy. Guess what? God's so happy that he sent his son to die just for you. And based on that, you can receive Jesus. And based on that, yeah, there's a fire lit in you. We got a fire lit in us when we went away. For sure we're going to be pretty excited. You guys be careful not to quench that fire because we're pretty excited. But the bottom line is those seeds are the same seeds. Those seeds could kind of go dormant in our hearts and maybe we'll stir them up on the next mission trip. Or we can say, no, let's, let's keep this moving. Let's keep this moving. And maybe you've been dormant. Maybe you never received Jesus before. Maybe you've never got out of your comfort zone and said, well, nothing good ever comes my way. Don't, because you're receiving exactly what you're saying. Begin to stop and say, God wants to do something in my life. Begin to stop and say, God wants to bring that change in my life. I wonder if we could just grab the hand of a neighbor for just a moment. <coughs>